So I know that many of you are currently working on your scientific paper uh, in preparation for your lab assignments and you're trying to get it to look the way that your instructor wants it to look. Uh, those of you who have questions about the general content of the scientific paper that we're putting in uh, here at Colin, you should check out my website and go to the lab section and either in the navigation bar or on the right hand side underneath the countdown clock to the practical and the campuses there should be a tab uh, or icon that says scientific paper and if you go to that page ultimately you'll be able to see a lot more information about the content of the paper, the way it should look, all that good stuff. In this tutorial what I want to show you is how you can effectively build a clean beautiful looking scientific paper uh, and maintain the styles that you're kind of working with throughout to make your life easier in the long run. Okay so we're gonna go ahead and get started here in a blank document and as you know your particular um, scientific paper is going to have several sections. It's going to have an abstract, an introduction, um, it's going to have materials and methods, results, and it'll have a discussion section as well, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. Now, this is the space where I would write the abstract. It would include all of the correct information. Okay, so there's just a, an arbitrary sentence I want to work with. And I'm going to highlight this and I'll change that to intro M and M. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep space between these. Um, let me go ahead and just paste this in. All right. Results. So I've got my sections here defined and then I've got my paragraph or what I want my paragraph to be. Now I want to kind of precede all of this by letting you know that when I teach lab I have certain formats, font sizes, font weights, everything like that that my students have to adhere to. Your instructor may require you to do something a little differently so please make sure that you adhere to their syllabus and please don't tell them what well, Professor Garcia told me to do this. Okay. Make sure you look at the syllabus, see what they want in terms of font sizes, but all the tutorials I'm going to show you here, you can make those changes and they'll still be the exact same kinds of implementation that I'm going to show you. So whether your instructor is asking you to use Arial font and I'm using asking you to use Times New Roman, you're still going to be able to do what I'm telling you to do here. You'll just do it with Arial font instead of Times New Roman. So pay attention to what your instructor asks you to do. In any case, I've got these heading sections that basically let me know here's materials and methods, results, introduction, and abstract. So let's say that you're in my class, my lab, and um, I tell you I want you to use Times New Roman for your section headers. I want it to be size 14 font and I want it to be bold. Okay, so I've currently changed my abstract to match that. Now what I used to do when I was in college was I would then go to introduction and I would do the same thing. I have to go come back up here, Times New Roman 14 bold. And you know, you can see I'm getting it accomplished in a matter of seconds and that's all well and good, but I want to show you a way that you can do the same exact thing but make it go a whole heck of a lot faster. Okay? Now this is going to require that we open up a panel here on the side. Okay? So you can open this panel either by clicking this icon here in your ribbon or you can come up here to view and choose styles. So it's the style toolbox we ultimately want. And what this toolbox is, is it's a collection of styles that we can apply to the paragraphs of our document. Now a paragraph is defined as a collection of words, letters, characters before you press the enter button. So once I press the enter button to go from this line down a line this whole thing here is considered a paragraph and whatever style I choose will be applied to that paragraph. So let's go to our abstract. This is our heading. Now you'll notice I have what's called heading one here and if I click this and I choose that it changes abstract to that heading. Now that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to change abstract to that heading. I wanted to create a heading based off of the format I have for my abstract. So I want all of my headings to have this formatting, Times New Roman, size 14, bold. So 
there are two things I can do. Either A, I can come in here to heading and I can choose to update it to match this section. So I could do update. And now you'll notice that the heading has been updated. Go ahead and back up on that. Okay, I don't want to do that right now, but you can if you want to. What I want to do is I want to create a brand new style based off of abstract. So I'm going to do new style and I'm going to call this style section heading. Okay, it has Times New Roman 14. It's bold style based on normal because that was originally the style I had. Um, and then style type paragraph. I can do character. I can do table. I can do list. So I'm going to do paragraph. Okay, so. I can do add to quick style list, and you definitely want this um, to, to be checked. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about why in just a second. Um, you can also notice choose alignment. You can choose spacing. So if I wanted this section heading to be double spaced, um, more condensed, uh, if I want it to align to a certain point, I can do any of those things, but I'm happy with what it is. So I'm going to say OK. All right, so now abstract is set to section heading. There it is. There's section heading. Okay. And if I want to look at only that, I can choose styles and use, and that's going to show me normal, clear formatting, and section heading are all currently in use. This is normal, okay, clear formatting, all that good stuff. So now what I want to do is I want to apply this style to introduction. Now introduction looks exactly the same as abstract, but currently you'll notice this is just called normal plus these changes. So I want to come here to introduction and I want, I want to apply section heading. So now intro has section heading applied to it. Notice if my cursor is around it or in it or over it, it's going to be section heading that's chosen. Now that might not seem that impressive, but let's see what happens when I come to materials and methods and I choose section heading. Now no, notice, I don't even have to have this highlighted. I can just have this wherever I have the paragraph and I can click section heading and voila, it changes it to be the section heading. Okay, I can do the same thing here with results and boom. So now here's the cool thing. Let's say that for whatever reason your instructor tells you, oh, I told you you had to use black font, but I actually meant you can choose whatever color you want to for your headings. Very rarely will this happen, but just in case it does, let's say, okay, well, I want to do a really cool blue for my headings. So notice you've updated abstract to be blue but none of your other headings are blue yet. Now, what you could do is you could go back through each of these headings and you could change them to blue by highlighting them and choosing blue. Or, with abstract selected, I can simply go here to section heading, click the down arrow, and choose update to match selection. And now all of my headings are blue to match. So let me control or command Z to go back. Um, I want to leave them the way they are. And so let's go ahead and format this now. So here's our, our actual section content. So let's go ahead and create a new style for this in a second. So again, I want this to be Times New Roman. I want it to be size 12, and it doesn't need to be bold, but I also want this to be double spaced. So there we go. I've now made this double spaced. So any of the stuff that comes after my initial section heading that is my section content, I want double spaced, size 12, Times New Roman. So I'm going to again create a new style, and I'm going to call this section content. I'm going to say OK. And so now I can just come to each of these paragraphs. So let me go ahead and choose this guy. Um, I'm going to go to recommended, and you'll notice I now have section content as an option, so I'm going to change him to section content. And now when I come back over to my styles and use list, there's section content. Styles and use is just an easy way to make this cleaner. If you want to, you're afraid you're not seeing it, go to recommended because recommended or all styles will show you every style that you have available. I typically go to recommended because it's styles you've created along with um, the recommended styles. Okay, so I can just go here, choose this is the space where I would write the intro, and as long as my cursor is on one of the lines of this paragraph and I click section content, it changes it. Okay. So I'm going to change all these to section content, and voila, now I've got these titles, and I've got section content um, that are both stylized the, the way they need to be. And so now any changes I make to the section content style will be modified in all of my different areas where I have section content. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, real quick, 
Let's go ahead and highlight this sentence. There we go. And I'm going to build on to my abstract okay, for very specific reasons. So I'm just using the same sentence over and over and over again. But let's say that your instructor told you that one of the requirements when you're writing this paper um, was that you have to put these different sections, the abstract, the intro, the materials and methods, all of that on different pages. Okay? Now, college me said, okay, my abstract has to be on one page, my intro should be on the next page, and the way I achieved that was by using the good old-fashioned return button. There I go, return, 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 until intro is on a new page. Let's see, did I go too far? Nope. Okay, one more, should do it. There we go, intro is on a new page. There's a problem with this, and you've probably encountered it numerous times. It seems like something small, but it winds up taking up a lot of your time if you encounter it. So let's say I finish writing my paper, and I decide I actually want to add more to the abstract. So I add two more, one more sentence that actually bumps this down a line. Well, let's see what happens to my intro. My intro actually gets bumped down a line as well. And that's a problem. And the same thing happens, too, if I realize my abstract is too long and I want to delete content, well, my intro gets pulled back up on the page. Using the return key to clear the page to go to the next page is a habit that I was really bad about. So what I want to introduce to you now is what's known as a page break. So I'm going to come over here to layout. You can also find this under insert. Okay, so insert is going to be break, or here in layout it's break. Okay, so I'm going to say page break. So this is going to tell me that I need to end the page when I start with introduction. And the cool part about this is now my introduction is on a separate page. But let's do the exact same thing I did before. Let's go here and let's highlight this sentence or this whole paragraph and let's add on to it. There we go. And let's add an, a brand new paragraph too. Let's see what happens to intro. Nothing. Intro stays exactly where it needs to be. I can come over here. I can even delete everything except that first sentence and my introduction doesn't move. Okay. So the cool thing about page breaks is that it basically says this is where you want to start a new page. So you always want to make sure you're at the beginning of the content that you want on the next page. If I had done the page break here at the end of introduction, then this content below introduction would have been on a new page, while the section heading would have remained on the previous page. And so if I want to, I can do the same thing here. I can insert a break, materials and methods, results, I can do the same thing. And now all of my different sections are on their own unique pages. And if I ever want to delete that page break for any reason, I can just delete twice and it eliminates that page break and introduction is suddenly now back on that page. If I want to put it back in, there we go. So by doing this, you should have an easier time ultimately um, when it comes to generating a uh, clean, very free-flowing document that's super easy for you to make changes to when it comes to edits. Okay, so with that, that's all I really have to say in this tutorial. Good luck working on your papers, and uh, leave comments and questions if you have them. Thanks.